Who would you say is leading the way in creating car-free walkable cities? Is it America? Asia? Or would you say Europe? If your answer was any of these, then you'd be incorrect. It's zombies. These undead flesh-eating eco warriors not only avoid all motorized transportation at all costs, but also promote a healthy lifestyle with their regular physical exercise. Despite this, zombies quite often get a bad rap. Most would agree it's the oil and car companies spreading false propaganda to damage the zombie lifestyle. Others would say it's the people eating. I'll let you decide. Today, we're going to be celebrating these humble environmentalists by creating a car-free, walkable city of the zombie dream. In fact, we're going to be creating two cities. The first, your typical car-centric, gridded city inhabited by the living. And then, once we're making a decent amount of money, we'll be turning this classic city into a zombie paradise. We'll test to see if it's possible to make a completely car-free, walkable city in city skylines. Typically, pedestrian streets and city skylines are designed to only take up a few blocks. They are super expensive and can be problematic if you don't set them up properly. Creating a city that is only made up of pedestrian streets really cranks this problem up a couple of notches. Before we dive in, if you enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate you dropping a like. And if you haven't already and you'd like to see more cheeky videos like this, then perhaps subscribe to the channel. The map you're using for this challenge is Greenway by the creator Greyflame. It's a lush and green valley surrounded by quite a harsh desert. The 2020 edition of this map provides us with an excellent starting grid to begin our city. This is great news because this video is ambitious as it is. I'm also using a bunch of mods and assets from the Steam Workshop and if you're interested in checking them out, there's a link to the collection in the description below. We begin our city like most cities would begin. At the creamy heart and centre of it all, the town centre. I'm using the Find It mod so I can place down buildings manually. I'm only doing this in the town centre because I wanted this to have a particular look. We're going for your classic American city, so lots of wall-to-wall -wall commercial, parking lots, historical town centre, and then a lovely little statue of the city founder. Look, it's me! The game automatically generates the name West Valley, which I think is pretty suitable. The map gives me a little bit of a western vibe and we're building in a valley. Plus, who cares, this is the city for the living. We're here for the city of the dead. We've also started with tons of money, but we're going to need every cent we can get. We're going to blow through all of this. I push on filling out to the downtown, placing each building manually. But then when we get to the suburbs, I begin the process of zoning. This is definitely a much faster way of building a city. I do still want a little bit of control when it comes to the way that my suburbs are going to look. I'm going to be using the building themes mod and the districts to make sure that the buildings are growing in a way and a style that I want. I start with just the three districts, which are each going to have a different look. I dive into the building themes mod and start selecting the buildings that I want in each district. And then it's time for some basic city services. Wind turbines to provide some power, and then a large water tower for some water. Most city planners enjoy laying their pipes below the roads, whereas I enjoy the more chaotic approach. As West Valley begins to grow, so does the demand of the living. Demanding, demanding living. Suddenly our clean energy wasn't good enough, so it gave the people something more powerful. Our streets are dangerous. Here's a police station. Our streets are dirty. Here's some landfill. The living, they're a needy bunch of people. But sure enough, you give the people what they want, and more will come. I expanded our residential zoning into the next block of grids. We educated the people with a fancy new high school, and then it was time to start getting into some industry. Not only did we have a bit of demand for this, but we also needed to start making money. Serious money. The best way to do this in City Skylines is to get into some specialised industry. And so the little town of West Valley became a little farming town. But we weren't done there. We weren't out to be a little town. We were out to be a city. A walkable, beautiful city. So I pushed on, increasing the population by expanding out the downtown. Ah, oh, and look, what a surprise. The living are complaining again. Apparently West Valley isn't bougie enough for the upper class. So I cater to the wealthy, creating more public transport options by building this train station. I even go to the effort to fence it in to make it more safer around here. I built parks and plazas and even added more entertainment to the downtown. And then even when that wasn't enough, I added in some shopping malls. Beautiful, sweet shopping malls. I decided to build a nice big one, just off the downtown, just off the highway. I provided lots of parking lots so that people could get there nice and easily. And then the fast food joints was a nice little addition. I added an access road at the back for deliveries and then included some industry at the back as well. With the added noise barrier between the highway and the mall and then some extra trees just for a little bit extra realism, this place was starting to look pretty nice. We hadn't built the apocalyptic wasteland just yet, but I tell you what, with builds like this, we're getting pretty close. And with that, the residents of West Valley were pretty happy. So I decided to take up this opportunity and expand out the residents just a little bit more. 
And with the setting sun over a happy city, I knew that I'd done my part as mayor to provide to the people. They were safe, they were happy, they were educated, they were sheltered. And what more could you ever possibly ask for? Uh, unfortunately, everyone died though and turned into zombies. And look, you know how the story goes, there's always a lot of theories that comes with these things. It's the government, it came from a lab just outside of the city. The dead have risen, it's the apocalypse. It's a virus spread from animals. Steve did it. It didn't matter where it came from or who did it. Steve. All that mattered now was that people were zombies and ready to start walking around the city, rather than driving. And in case you're wondering how you get zombies into city skylines, it's unfortunately not that simple. The first thing you gotta do is go to Steam Workshop and download the Gnarly Zombie Citizen. You also wanna grab the No Vanilla Citizens mod. Unfortunately, the Gnarly Zombie is only one type of citizen, so I had to go into Citizen Editor and spend quite a bit of time making sure that all the people were assigned to the Gnarly Zombie skin. It's a bit of a process, but it's honestly pretty cool seeing zombies walking around your city. But you know what? Zombies don't be driving cars. They're mean green eco machines. They be walking. So the next step in this challenge was to turn every single road in this city into a pedestrian pathway. Surprisingly, this process didn't take quite as long as I expected. And double surprisingly, this didn't cost any extra money. In preparation for this, I was saving up a bit of cash because I knew that this was going to be quite costly. This process might not cost us any money, but the maintenance cost down the track was really going to hurt us. With the last road now converted into a pedestrian pathway, I was pretty happy with the fact that the city still maintains the same look. It didn't look like a city that was only made up of pedestrian streets, it just looked the same. I placed down the essential service points right next to the highway for easy access, and then it wasn't until I was creating my pedestrian districts that I was hit to my first big problem. You can't have a pedestrian only industrial zone. This was a big blow. The farming industry was providing us with a lot of money, and we couldn't just move it. Luckily, this is when I also realised that this is the stinky part of town. The living can have this area. And thus, Human Town was born. Emerging from the ashes of the stinky industrial zone that Zomtown didn't really want in the first place. Here the living can drive freely and frolic on their sidewalks. Yes, technically, this was still part of Zomtown. We were still, technically, using this industry. But I'm going to pretend that you didn't know that. The zombies constructed a fence to stop the humans from getting into Zomtown. And with that, we're ready to let the simulation run again, and let the zombie citizens enjoy their new, car-free, walkable city. However, it wasn't truly walkable. We still had service vehicles circling our city streets. We couldn't have this. So the police station, fire station and hospital were all removed from Zomtown, and then replaced with their helicopter counterparts within Human Town. I like to imagine that these are rescue helicopters searching for survivors. And not only do they look great buzzing around our skies, but they also free up our city streets. Unfortunately, there is no helicopter equivalent for waste management and ironically, death care. But thankfully, there were invisible garbage trucks in the Steam Workshop, so that also works. However, something was still bothering me about Zomtown. Yes, the streets were filled with zombies. Yes, they were free to walk around wherever they liked. But a lot of it just did not feel right. Somewhere along the line, we had lost the zombie way. Zombies were not pet owners. They were not bike riders. Yes, they were technically attending classes and visiting shopping malls, but I could live with that. I couldn't live with a zombie on a bike. Nor could I live with the idea that the zombies went through and cobbled every single street in this city. That's not the zombie way. Zombies are recyclers. They would have reused every part of this city, including the city streets. I knew what had to be done. It needed to be the apocalyptic dreamland that the zombies deserved. The first job was to get the city streets back to how they originally looked, but then also keep the functionality of the pedestrian street. Luckily, I had originally copied over the city streets to this part of the desert using Move It. I then dragged over the roads back to the original space they were in. Of course, this was incredibly slow with the amount of nodes that I had selected. I lined them up with the pedestrian streets and then raised them up using Move It ever so slightly. This meant I was able to cover up the pedestrian streets. To really capture the apocalyptic dream, I started to convert some of these roads so they're a little bit more worn down. And it was time to start adding in the only vehicles allowed within Zomtown, abandoned and destroyed. I placed these vehicles down in piles and then I used Mover to copy them over to different areas. This saved quite a lot of time. With the streets now looking nice and worn down, it was time to start wearing out a bit of the city. The suburbs were first, finding a couple of houses to remove and then replacing them with piles of rubble. I'm mostly using piles from the Disasters DLC. I'm able to find them using the Find It mod. I'm also using Find It's to place down fire and smoke, which really adds to this area. 
I use Move-Its to copy and paste these piles into different areas of the suburbs, and then I also use Move-Its to place some of the fire effects into some of the windows of the houses. I use the same technique in our downtown, with our town hall also receiving the zombie makeover. And then I even go through and replace some of the buildings with some more destroyed versions of those buildings. Most notably, the tallest building within the city has definitely changed its look. And then it was time to go for the crown jewel of West Valley, the shopping mall. I started by placing down a bunch of crowd spawners. This would encourage crowds of zombies to spawn there, taking a bit of inspiration from Dawn of the Dead. I added in some flame and smoke props and that pretty much finished off the build. I used the no pets policy to stop zombies from raiding dogs and then banned zombies from riding bikes on sidewalks. I'm gonna be honest, I don't feel great about those two policies. And unfortunately with the added roads, even though they were on pedestrian streets, zombies were still finding ways to drive. Our last resort, the only option we had, we had to ban all passenger vehicles using advanced vehicle options. And at last, finally, the zombies had their completely car free walkable city. The zombies finally had their dream city. So is it possible to make a completely car free walkable city in city skylines? Well anything is possible if you put your mind to it. But, but this is definitely not a good idea. The maintenance on this city is super expensive and half the city doesn't even function anymore. So I don't, I don't really recommend it, it's just a fun little experiment. And to be honest, I just wanted to see zombies walking around a car free city. Kinda. Also, wasn't really meant to be a commentary about cars. It's really just a, just a tale about zombies. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video and like to see more like this, then subscribe to the channel because I plan to do more like this every couple of months or so. And if you have any ideas for some extra challenges, please let me know in the comment section. A big thank you to my patrons who allow me to work on silly videos like this when it said I could be doing other work. A big thank you to Daryl Albert, Eleanor Lempel, Timothy Haytayan, to Jorvins, Spencer Hitchings, Matthew Harrison, Eckhart's Ladder, Ricardo Scoparo, Alex Calbert, Tony Perrick, The Federation, and Valeria. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye!